Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at First English. I'm Pastor Marlene Elmstrom. For some of you that may not know me, and many, many faces are familiar, so thank you to Pastor Dave and to all of you for allowing me to share and to um, lead worship with you this morning. It's a great privilege to be able to do that. We welcome all to worship. If you're a visitor, we're glad you're here. If you're a part of Fairway Neighborhood or listening on the radio, we're glad that you are a part of our um, worship and praise to God this morning as well. And we trust that the Spirit will fill all of us with the joy and the love of Christ as we gather in, in Jesus' name. Uh, You are invited downstairs following worship for coffee and fellowship and a time to get to know one another better, and I hope you'll take advantage of that. And we thank the um, Endowment Fund for making our radio broadcast uh, possible this morning. We will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion, and we invite all who are baptized and believe that Jesus died for their sins to come and receive the sacrament. For those who haven't received instruction, you are still invited to come and receive a blessing. And if you're not able to come forward, let one of the ushers know, and we will certainly be uh, be willing to come and serve you where you are seated. There's an insert in the bulletin, Blast Off for Books. I think it's part of the... Um, national youth gathering emphasis on mission and caring for the people in Houston so make yourself aware of that also to note that the annual election meeting for First English will be on June 17th following worship and there's a note regarding the constitutional change that will be voted on that is also in the bulletin and let's see Oh, there's a a trip to the Twins game on July 7th. If you are interested in sharing in that, contact Marla Stry. And then I received a note this morning to invite you to the Agape Singers performance. That'll be uh, this evening at 7 o'clock at New Life Community Baptist Church. There are high school... uh, It's a high school group with members from Ortonville, Dawson, and La Caparle. And some of our... Young people or people that we know or that our people, our young people know are part of that group, so you are encouraged to come and share in that. Are there any other announcements that I'm forgetting for the good of the order? Well, if not, then let's stand for the greeting and sharing of the peace. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Let us begin our worship with a brief order for confession and absolution as you find it on page 116 in the ELW hymnal, also on the screen. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, 
And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we join in our entrance hymn number 513, Listen, God is Calling. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us 
Let us join together in praying the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, throughout time you free the oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and say, power, restore us to wholeness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading can be found on page 126 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. Part of the Ten Commandments, these verses instruct the Israelites to keep the Sabbath. The Israelites are to rest, and they are to allow their slaves, their livestock, and the foreigners living among them to do the same. They were once slaves, and so they are to treat their own slaves justly. A reading from Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, beginning with the twelfth verse. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox, or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slaves may rest, as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 81 is found in the red ELW hymnal between the readings and the hymns. We will read responsively by half verse. Raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. A reading from the Psalms, the 81st chapter, beginning with the first verse. Sing with joy to God our strength. And raise, a loud shout to God raise a song and sound the timbrel. The Blow the ram's horn at the new moon. For this is a statute for Israel. A law God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph. I ease your shoulder from the burden. You called on me in trouble, and I delivered you. Hear, O oh my people, and I will admonish you. There shall be no strange God among you. You I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. The reading can be found on page 138 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. When we carry out God's ministry, we do so not for our glory, but for the sake of Jesus Christ, whom we proclaim as Lord. The power for ministry comes from God, not us, so that we persevere no matter what, trusting God's power and promises at work through us. A reading from Romans, the fourth chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. For we do not proclaim ourselves, We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness. 
who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. This is the word of the Lord. I invite any children that are willing to come forward. I know it's hard to come up and be with somebody that you don't know. So how are all of you? Good? Is school over? Okay. And so now you're ready to just enjoy summer. So I have to ask you, do any of you have rules that you have to follow? Do you? Are there rules at your house? What kind of rules do you have? No throwing in the house. That's a great rule. We try that at our house when our kids are growing up, and most of the time they remember that. What's another rule? Always what? Oh, clean your room. Oh, that's a good one, too. Even if you're an adult. Any other rules at your house? We had a rule in our house, a kind of a funny rule. It was, you shall not sing at the table. Any of you have that rule in your house? We couldn't sing at the table because then we'd never eat. Did you know that God has rules for us too? Do you know what the most important rules or the most remembered rules are? Well, pray is is a good one. God would like us to pray. But there were 10 rules that God gave God's people to include us. Do you remember what those 10 rules are called? The 10 commandments. Have you ever heard of that, the 10 commandments? Mm -hmm. And the first three commandments tell us about how to love God. And the the last commandments tell us how to love one another. So we love God and we love one another. And the last of the three commandments that tell us how to love God is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Have you ever heard the word Sabbath before? No? Sabbath means rest. Do you like to rest? You do? Oh, good. Moms and dads love kids that like to rest once in a while. And that's exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to have all kinds of fun and do all kinds of activities, but he also says we need to rest. Why is it good for us to rest? Why do you think God wants us to rest? Can you think of a reason to rest? That's right. So then you have energy. And the other reason that God wants us to rest, to remember the Sabbath, is so that we remember God. What what has God done for us? Can you think of anything God does for us? Just about everything. God created everything. God gave us our families. God provides for us. So God wants us to remember to stop And say thank you to God. To not get so busy with everything else that we don't remember that God is a part of every part of life that we live. So that's why we come to church. Do you like to come to church on Sundays? Sometimes. You're being very honest. You're being very honest. But your mom's and uh, your family says, we're going to go to church and that's what we do, right? Yeah, well... Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. There are lots of people over the years 
that have not wanted to take time to remember the Sabbath. But God gives us a special gift so that we can remember God, so that we can get more energy, so that we can be the people God needs us to be. I think Pastor Dave always says, what's the one rule that you should remember when you leave here? Be kind. Thank you. And be kind means to love, to love God and to love one another. So will you pray with me? Can you fold your hands and repeat after me? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You can help us for loving us for, and giving us everything, including rest. Help us on this day of rest to remember you, to praise you, and to be the children you want us to be. In Jesus' name, name. Amen. amen. Thanks for coming up. Go home and obey all the rules, okay? I invite you to stand, if you are able, for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second chapter. One Sabbath, Jesus is going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and we will receive a musical offering from Nathan Ehrenberg, accompanied by Lisa Berdan. Precious Lord, take my hand.
When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Thank you, Nathan. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, You give us rules to live by, not to constrain us, but to show us how much you love us and how much you want fullness of life for us and for this whole world that you so love. But we are good rule breakers. And we thank you that even when we break your law, that you continue to come to us in the gift of your son, in the gift of forgiveness, to gather us in, to remind us that we are loved and beloved and that each day is a new opportunity to proclaim to the world that you are the God of love, the God who gives us all that we need. So now as we ponder your word, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Interesting texts, these. And especially, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Pastors hardly dare talk about it anymore because how much Sabbath do we really observe? And yet we wouldn't want to be constrained. We wouldn't want it to be so rigid as it was for some of our forebears. I hate to admit this because it makes me seem even older than I already feel, but I had relatives who were farmers who didn't work on Sunday, no matter what the weather or the circumstances. And as the hay lay in the field on a sunny Sunday and the next day it poured down rain, they wondered about this rule. And as a pastor who used to take kids on retreats into the Twin Cities to learn about other faiths and and especially to understand where our roots come from in terms of the Jewish understanding and the Jewish tradition, and we would go to either the Temple of Aaron in St. Paul or the Temple of Israel in Minneapolis. And the Temple of Aaron is a much more conservative understanding of Judaism. And as we would prepare for worship, there was always someone to give us information about what worship would be like, but what the Jewish understanding of faith was like. And I always, as part of this retreat, going to worship, they could do, the confirmation students could do a sermon note. And I remember the first time we went to the Temple of Aaron and they whipped out their sermon note sheets as we were getting ready to leave the information room and the guide went, whoa, you can't take that into worship. Of course, they had also taken out their pencils. That's work. We don't work on the Sabbath. And of course, we had great discussion about that afterward. The kids thought that was a great use of the rule. They also thought it was quite odd. Work? Taking sermon notes? You make us work every Sunday, Pastor? <laughs> and then we also talked about the, how it seemed strange because right after worship, we were invited for fellowship as you, you as we practice And people would be serving and making sure these beautiful trays of goodies were coming and going and being refilled. But it was never people that belonged to the temple. 
It was always non-Jewish people that could work on the Sabbath. A little contrary to what Deuteronomy said, isn't it? So it's no wonder that when Jesus and his disciples are out and about walking, and I always find this part just really interesting, they were walking through the grain fields. I don't know, but where I grew up close to a farm, if we, we could walk through cornfields between the rows, but if we walked through a grain field intentionally knocking down the grain, <laughs> So they're walking along and they pluck off the heads and they eat it. Work. Really? And then Jesus says that the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath, when the religious police, who just happened to be there, call him to account for it. And then he goes into the synagogue. And and I think he already knows Of course he already knows. We're only 45 verses into Mark and the authorities, the religious authorities are already after him because he's so popular. He goes into the synagogue and he sees a man with a withered hand. And he says to the the authorities, "Is is it okay? Is it okay to work on the Sabbath if you're doing good? And of course, they don't answer. But they want him. They want him to heal that man so that they have grounds. Grounds to prosecute or to go after this upstart who seems to be gathering all the people out of their pews and sending them off to a new kind of understanding. And Jesus does just that. He tells the man to stretch out his hand, and he does, and he's healed. He works on the Sabbath because law never trumps love. Not even for God. God gave us the law to keep us safe, to make community the best thing that it could possibly be for all of God's people, for all of God's world. But law never over trumps love. It never means that we shouldn't be looking for opportunities, even on the Sabbath, to love and care for the neighbor. Jesus healed a man with the withered hand. I contend that we have lots of withered areas in our life and in our world right now that need healing. And we are way too willing to allow people to say anything and do anything that hurts other people and not stand up and do anything about it. To make the Sabbath holy, as one person so beautifully declared it, we can observe Sabbath on one day but it takes all seven days of the week to make it holy, to live in to the love that God came to give us in the gift of the incarnated Christ. Since I retired from First English, I've had opportunities to do interim ministry in several areas, the last of which was in St. Cloud, a different community than Ortonville with a lot more diversity than Ortonville. And I have always thought that I have tried to live a life of care and concern and openness and love. But I was reminded one Sabbath of how my words and my reaction to people could be offensive rather than loving. And I was, I was really puzzled and hurt by the confrontation, the accusation, until I put myself in the shoes of the other. It happened to be a black family in the congregation who said, 
mom said, you know, every time my teenage son goes out, I worry. Every time he drives the car, I'm scared to death he's going to get stopped. Now, I can't even tell you what words I used. They certainly weren't words of intentional diminishing. But when they were heard as not loving, I was certainly breaking the law. Because to love God is to love the neighbor. And it's to be willing to listen to what the neighbor is saying about how their life, their lives are impacted by what I, what we say and do. To keep the Sabbath holy, we as God's people are now called to live into our baptism in a new way. To listen, to listen more intentionally, to reach out more intentionally, like you do as not only every day, but I love it that you have turned Rally Sunday into God's work, our hands, that you go out and actually do for the neighborhood. That is also worship and Sabbath. But again, We live in a broken world. We are broken and sinful people. And did you notice in the gospel reading that Jesus looked at them and for one of two times that I can think of, Jesus was angry. Angry at their hardness of heart. Maybe it's our hearts that that are withered a little bit and need to be opened up. I think I've done this once before, a long time ago here at First English, but put your right arm up if you can. Clench your fist really tight, really tight. Can you feel your whole body tightening up? Even your heart muscle is tightening up. Now, open that hand slowly. Do you feel all the muscles relaxing? We need to open up our withered hearts and hands and reach out to the neighbor more intentionally in love. It won't always be pleasant. It might remind us that what we've always thought was right can be offensive to others. And if so, we need to think about how can I change? How can I do things differently? How can I be more loving? Because what the world needs is Jesus. And what the world needs is you being little Christ in the world. So go in love. And don't worry, you will break the law, we all will. But that's why Jesus died and rose again. That's why Jesus calls us and invites us and continues to come and meet us and say, go get them. I love you. You're beloved. And I need you for the sake of this whole world that God also so loves. Amen. So as we think about being those who love, As we think about what it means to be God's people together, let us confess what this faith means in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you want to find it in the hymnal, it is on page 127. I invite you to stand if you are able. If you want to read the words on the screen, you are welcome to do so. Let us confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We'll receive our morning tithes and offerings as we also join together and sing hymn number 521, O Day of Rest and Gladness. And if you are able, filled with the Holy Spirit, let us join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. God of love, you command your people to keep Sabbath. Thank you for the privilege of gathering here today, for the gift of your spirit who coaxes us away from the busyness of the world and gives us holy rest, so that refreshed and fed by your grace, we may leave this place ready to give vibrant witness to your world-healing love. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we know that you grieve our hardness of heart whenever we turn your holy counsel into rules that control rather than bring life. Forgive us and open our hearts to your loving will for unbridled compassion for our neighbors and for this community of faith. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, you alone can restore what is withered our care and concern for your beautiful but fragile gift of creation that has filled these days with devastating storms, fires, and lava flows. You alone can restore what is withered, our care and concern for our life and relationship with you and with one another, especially at times such as these when public words are used as weapons to strike down, diminish, and hurt the vulnerable, causing many to feel unsafe, even in their own homes and neighborhoods. Empower us by your spirit that we may have the courage to be your instruments of holy compassion that help revive what has ceased to flourish and repair what has fallen into decay. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we ache for peace in a world that is ripe with bitterness and hostility. Raise up leaders who will listen more intentionally to your voice 
and walk more intentionally in your ways. And until your true peace is realized, watch over and keep safe Peter Hansen and all who serve in our military and foreign service, especially those deployed to areas of conflict. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, shine the light of your healing and comforting presence into the hearts of all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, so that they will not be crushed, driven to despair, or feel forsaken. Especially we lift up before you today Jerry, Nikki, Lee, Marlo, Mariah, Josh, Howard, Stan, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Aaron, Sharon, Gordy, Anders, Paulette, Verdon, Lauren, Natalie, Jeanette, Bella, Christopher, Dorothy, Tordy, Emily, Annika, Kennedy, Terry, Gwen, Rena, Dolores, Hazel, Burl, Betty, and Cheryl. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we pray that this vacation Sabbath time has brought rest and renewal for Pastor Dave and Anne. Be with them and all who travel in the gift of these more relaxed summer days. Lord, in your mercy. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O God, we lift up our prayers and trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready. Jesus invites you to come.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Our closing hymn, number 534, Savior again to your dear name. <laughs>